In the Philippines, the likely election victory of the dictator's son, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr., has sparked anger and protests. According to an unofficial count, the 64-year-old received more than twice as many votes as his fiercest rival, opposition leader Leni Robredo, in the voting on Monday, May 9th in 2022. Hundreds of people took to the streets in front of the Electoral Commission building on Tuesday after the election and accused the authority of electoral fraud. According to reports, thousands of citizens were unable to vote because of defective voting, uh, vote counting machines. The official election result will probably not be announced by Congress for a few weeks, but um, Marcus Jr.'s victory is considered certain. His opponents are dismayed that the notorious family will soon be able to move back into the Malacanang Palace in the capital Manila, 36 years after being expelled from the island nation. In addition, according to the calculations, Sara Duterte Capio will become vice president. She is the daughter of outgoing President Rodrigo Duterte, who is internationally pilloried for his tough fight against drug-related crime. Under his leadership, thousands of people are said to have been murdered by death squads in the past six years. Bongbong and Duterte Capio ran as a duo. Their influential families are considered to be closely linked. They both represent the worst type of traditional politics and governance in our nation's history, the human rights group Karapatan said in a statement. We therefore call on the Filipino people to resolutely reject the notorious tandem and to stand against possible further oppression and violations of civil rights, they said. Under Ferdinand Marcos and the shoe-loving former First Lady Imelda, murder, torture and kleptocracy were the order of the day. The family is said to have diverted billions from the state coffers. During his election campaign, Bongbong Marcos glorified his father's regime as a golden age of prosperity. Critics spoke of a disinformation campaign that he conducted primarily on social networks such as TikTok and YouTube, where he has millions of followers. He was able to win over young voters in particular, who have no memory of the time of martial law. Political observers consider Marcus Jr. to be less repressive. He's kind of relaxed. I don't think he's authoritarian, said analyst Tony Lavina to the German press agency. I think Marcus Jr. wants to please. He doesn't want trouble and will avoid trouble, he says. But that also makes that but that also means that he may not want to make difficult decisions. Others believe that BBM, as Marcus calls himself, has no plan for fulfilling his ambitious election promises. Cheap rice, cheap petrol, jobs, infrastructure, peace and order. How does he want to do that? asked political scientist Arias Aruge. The only goal of the campaign was to win by means of gigantic promises. But there is no plan. It seems that they can only improvise now. In the Philippines, with 110 million inhabitants, many live in abject poverty. Many previous governments did little to change the disastrous situation. The election promises were well received, though. Experts fear that the new president will not bring any change either. Amnesty International called on Tuesday for the new government to make a dramatic course correction and break away from the past six years under Rodrigo Duterte, particularly with regard to human rights. However, the organization was pessimistic that this was happen, uh, would happen. The Marcos regime was overthrown in 1986 and had to flee to Hawaii. After the death of Ferdinand Marcos, the family returned to the Philippines just five years later. Many members, including Mother Imelda and Marcos Jr., have since held political office on and off. Experts say the family has been preparing to return to power. More than 7,000 islands make up the Republic of the Philippines, which is home to over 100 million people in around 100 ethnic groups. While the south of the island state was influenced by Islam early on, the other parts of the country were Christianized during the Spanish colonial period from the 16th century. 
Due to climate change, the Southeast Asian country is increasingly threatened by extreme weather and despite solid economic growth, is one of the poorest in the region. Many Filipinos are therefore forced to look for work in other countries in order to financially support their mostly large families. The current political situation in the Philippines is characterized by the extremely repressive government of the outgoing President Rodrigo Duterte, whose brutal drug war has triggered international outrage. And if all this comes true with the election result, we will see what BBM is bringing to that country. I can only hope it will not as bad as people fear. And I'll see you in my next video. Bis gleich.